Hi, and welcome to City Desk, a behind the scenes look at Santa Barbara's top local news stories. I'm your host, Jerry Roberts, joined by an all-star lineup of local journalists for an inside look at these headlines. Another big electric outage strikes downtown and the power company has few answers. And America's culture wars surface in Santa Barbara with battles over abortion rights and funding for Planned Parenthood, a sexual theme painting in a public building and the proper way to have sex on campus. Joining me to dig into these issues from high atop the luxurious South Salinas Street world headquarters of TV Santa Barbara are four journalists from the Santa Barbara Independent. Columnist Starshine Rochelle, staff writer Kelsey Brueger, executive editor Nick Welsh, and news editor Tyler Hayden. Thanks to you all for being here. Tyler, we've had a uh, endless series of Southern California Edison electric outages uh, this year, or at least it seems so. Uh, and the impacts this time included stranding a dozen people uh, in elevators in Macy's. <clears throat> What's going on? It's actually been the last couple years. There's been uh, over 10 uh, since 2014. And while the elevator uh, issue always kind of makes headlines and gets the, gets the firefighters out there, what is really upsetting folks is, uh, is how it's impacting businesses downtown. So these outages have been happening kind of during the, the rush times for dinner, you know, during the weekend when, when restaurants are full, bars are full, and they have to empty. And uh, these business owners take massive hits when that happens. So they're pretty upset. They've been upset for a while. They started a petition last year to, to lobby Edison to make downtown repairs a priority. Seems like Edison started to, to do that, um, but these are clearly still happening because there was one just the other day, right before Edison showed up to the city council to claim that everything's going just fine. To brief them and, and basically told them it's none of their business, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, they when they uh, started talking about their their massive reliability project is what they're calling it, what they want to do to the downtown, um, they, they said, you know, we're trying to decide between a few different options and we're going to decide and then we're going to let you know and then you guys can kind of talk to us from there. But there wasn't a lot of uh, talk of, of collaboration and, and uh, you know, city to Edison, uh, you know, cooperation. So they're acting like the evil monopoly that they are. Did you get, were you plunged into darkness? We actually had just gone for ice cream. We were so excited. We pulled up right outside of Baskin Robbins and shoot, the whole thing went dark. Go home. How Stay about you? Home. I was at home. And Lights was it out. was it just horror? Was it worse <laughs> no, than it Vietnam was, it was or what? Nice. I lit a bunch of candles and then about five minutes later the lights went back on. And <laughs> so you <laughs> you you kind of liked it. Yeah. And you? You know, I was out. I was out of the area. I had no problem at all. Here's the thing. I I, I know that the, the 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 elevators is kind of a cliche, but. Did anybody talk to people? Did they know the other people? Can you imagine being stuck in an elevator like with that guy who just talks all the time or someone who has very different political views? Did, did any word on no, that? No, I haven't talked to the elevator victims, but I'm sure, I'm sure it was rough. You think they have post-traumatic <laughs> elevator syndrome? Yeah, they'll, but the they'll business, take the stairs forever. The, well, no. Well, first of all, you, you're in that Macy's, which is the worst. I think it's a glass elevator, is it not? Yeah. Oh, you, I think it? you can see out of it. <laughs> oh, come on. Well, not in the dark. How are you going to see? How many, yeah, how many <laughs> have you seen it more than here in downtown? Like I three? was stuck in the elevator at Stork Plaza once, and it, and it was a nightmare. <laughs> Actually, it was kind of nice because there were no students in there, and I, I, I didn't mind. Were you going up to the Carillon? Well, you I had your book. Anyway, I did have my book. <laughs> so, but it's a serious problem for the business guys. It and, is. It and is. It's like there's no... You had a thing about there's there's no connection between Goleta there's, there's and... There's two different issues going on. There's the sort of aging infrastructure of downtown. So a lot of our electric system is 50, 60 plus years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was some of the first to go underground, which is good for aesthetic purposes, but really tough for maintenance. Transformers blow more when they're under the ground because leaves and stuff get inside. And it just, it just makes for rough maintenance. Um, so that's happening. And... Uh, there's sort of a larger issue going on too, where we are very uh, delicately tethered to the rest of the Southern California grid by one set of lines that comes up from Santa Clara over the mountains into Ventura. So what's, what was brought up at the city council meeting was that for some reason, if those lines went out, if there was some massive flood or fire, we would be in pretty deep trouble because we wouldn't have enough backup power to keep us sustained. Uh, at all. I mean, we'd have rolling blackouts, but we would have to wait for those towers to be repaired, and that could take weeks. So it was kind of a little bit of a, 
um, a doomsday scenario that got brought up, but it is, I, I think it's legitimate. Nice. Well, well thanks for bumming everybody out. You're welcome. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. Appreciate it. <laughs> and plus, I'll probably the rates will go up, too, because it, 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 they're doing all this work. That, yeah, that's a definite possibility. I mean, it's tens of millions of dollars worth of, worth of repairs, so... We need Wouldn't public it? power. Nick, yeah. you need to get out of that. Yeah. All right. So both the city council and the board of supervisors had a kind of protest debate over taxpayer funding for Planned Parenthood going into the national congressional uh, controversy over that. Um, and that's is all because of these video recorded comments by the head of uh, or, or some of the top executives of Planned Parenthood uh, talking about uh, fetal body parts being used for stem cell research. What uh, what was the scene? Well, um, Kelsey was at the Board of Supervisors. I was at the City Council. Um, there were 37 people up in Santa Maria testifying, uh, all of whom were against this resolution that the supervisors passed in support of Planned Parenthood. They were, they were really like um, rah-rah resolutions by the City Council and the supervisors to sort of stand up with Planned Parenthood in the face of it's this group, uh, they, I don't remember the name right offhand, some completely generic name, but they masqueraded as Biomax Procurement Services, and they were trying to buy, I think, you know, brains and, and livers and other fetal parts. And they went out to uh, lunch uh, with some Planned Parenthood executives in Pasadena, and over Chablis were talking about the remuneration. And it, there's 12 hours of video taken, and they've been breaking them down since July, you know, a little bit by little bit. And they're heavily edited, and um, they're clearly of a very strong anti-abortion uh, perspective. And they're trying to make the, the case that Planned Parenthood is marketing body parts for profit. And um, that is against the federal law. That's been against the law since 1993, where, you know, fetal parts. Are, this is, it's, they're sold to people doing stem cell research. They're, they're sold to different um, labs that do stem cell research. Which, you know, polio um, actually used, um, some of the polio research had fetal um, parts. Um, a lot of uh, medical research uses fetal body parts. Um, it's been going on for a long time. It's sort of, a, it's very creepy, it's very disturbing, but it's been happening. And but the local, the local issue was that the pro choice champions put these symbolic right. resolutions forward. Right. Two, two of them running for Congress, I believe. It is an interesting coincidence. Yes, at it's city so council, rude. you have Helene Schneider, the mayor, you have the, the supervisor, you have uh, Salud, who not only did he mention uh, his strong support for women's rights, but I think he brought up his, uh, war, his uh, military record three or four times and said, as a man, I would do this over and over and over again. Um, so he would do what? He would support resolutions oh, like oh, this. Oh, yes. I see. He would. Yeah. He, yeah. he wouldn't sell fetal body yeah. parts. For and, and so, it was. It was sort of a very symbolic showdown, and um, it was very choreographed. Um, the supervisors had a much more in-your-face uh, resolution, which said, "Whereas these videos were made to intentionally distort, lie, mutilate, fold, spindle the truth, um, the, the city council was much more, you know." Uh, Planned Parenthood has been a good citizen. Nine thousand people a year go to. Well, Helene was the, wasn't she the executive director of Planned Parenthood? She was the executive director. She was HR. I think that came up. Uh, one of the critics testified, and you, you have been an employee of Planned Parenthood. She said, "Yeah, I actually put that up my first time I ran for office um, when I was a high school intern. I interned for Planned Parenthood. I volunteered for Planned Parenthood in college." I've been with Planned Parenthood, it's pretty well known. So did you think it was just pandering by Salute and Helene? Mm, it was a little bit ironic that they were on the same, or coincidental, I suppose, that they were on the same, the same day, and, and that was noted. I think a couple people pointed that out. Um, so it, it, is, it, it is timely, though. Yeah, I mean, time. some of the Republicans are no, this is threatening a, to shut down no, the this is government. Totally, I mean, it isn't just an action. I mean, when you have... 31 Republicans saying, we are going to oppose um, the federal spending bill unless the half a billion bucks that goes to Planned Parenthood is stripped. Um, this is very cool. I know you all watched the, all three hours of the, the Republican presidential debate last night. The, 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 the guy who's really scary on this, and you know, not to let my politics show, but is, is Ted Cruz from Texas. And he called 
Planned Parenthood an ongoing criminal enterprise. And these, you know, they're, they're swearing, not only will they shut the government down, but, you know, if they get a Republican president, a Republican AG, that they're going to investigate them. Put, I mean, you, we were talking before, you just kind of scratching your head about I, I, what. I don't what, understand what the issue is. I mean, I do understand. I understand the issue with abortion, but, I, but the issue of what to do with fetal tissue, I don't know why, why you wouldn't put that to use somewhere. For yeah. stem cell, and, yeah. and even if they were making a profit, that's okay with you? I mean, I, I, is, is the profit the issue? Is that the big thing that's the problem? I don't think so. I think that's a red herring. I think it's really just, like you said, back to the fact that abortion is happening. They're doing it. They're doing it, you know, you know, callously by taking these parts and not, I don't know, what, having a service for them? I mean, why wouldn't you put it to medical research? It doesn't even make well, sense. Well, and, and you have to get the, you have to get the consent of the woman, uh, yeah. Stuff like mm -hmm. that. Well, that's what comes out. If you actually, I mean, actually, to be honest, I haven't, read, I haven't watched the videos, but having read articles by people who have, who have, yes. Um, I, I mean, what they say is, you watched the video. Yeah, I saw it. I mean, what it shows is that you know, Planned Parenthood uh, believes um, sincerely in, in the medical value of this, and a lot of their donors really want this to go to some use. Okay, I'm having this abortion, I mean, of course. and I want this to go exactly. to some some purpose. So. You know, they aren't um, trying to, uh, you know, make a profit. I mean, they're, it, it turns out when um, Biomax first approached them, they said, hey, how about 1600 bucks? Would you sell it to us for 1600 bucks?" And they said, dude, we can only charge 100 or 50 I mean, they can only charge what the actual cost to, you know, prepare, package, deliver. Yeah, but I think, and the, you know, isn't part of the other thing is that the way they talk about it, I mean, it's their business, and that's kind of what they do. So. If somebody, for example, saw an actual news meeting where, you know, people were talking about <laughs> yes. murder, yeah, uh, mayhem, yeah. things like that, they would also be shocked <laughs> right. be, be, because it's just kind yeah, of a just get insider baseball. It and, yeah. You know, you're a little bit jaded, perhaps, because it's, you're used to it. And then they had three or four glasses of wine, perhaps, and loosened their tongues. Were you surprised at the number of pro-life advocates who came out at the supervisors mm -hmm. um i had heard that they were mobilizing the troops the day before so i mean after two hours i was a little bit surprised that it, it was that long though i had heard that they were going to get quite a few people um, most of them were were in santa maria do you have a sense of how wide you know what sort of the political split in santa barbara county would be pro-choice versus pro-life um you know, it's you can a just make it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, I, you know, I, I, I don't get the sense that the the pro life or the anti abortion crowd is make takes up a big percentage of, of the county. I, I don't know for but sure. They're very but, motivated. They're, but they're, but very they're vocal. You know, it's the vocal minority um, is is what it seems like to me. And if you're sitting at a supervisor's meeting, and it's a it's a tricky thing in in covering politics, is you know you. You are writing what you're seeing, and you're just you're writing all these comments from all these people. But it's like, is that representative of Santa Barbara County? And how, how do you portray that in a news article that's neutral but you know balanced? <laughs> and the, plan, the, the Planned Parenthood book sale we should mention yeah, get is the book yeah. starts tonight. But no, I mean Santa Barbara County has been solidly pro-choice yeah. at least since 1990. I mean, think about any politician who's gone on to higher office. If you aren't pro-choice and you can't make a credible case for it. Um, you not go anywhere. Yeah, and there have been a number of initiatives, um, uh, parental consent and things like yeah, that. Yeah, they died. The they all died. Well, you had an interesting week, too. Uh, beside that story, you were also covering the uh, offensive, allegedly offensive painting hung up in the uh, county building. And some aide, I guess, to uh, Supervisor Adams decided to make a unilateral uh, move on behalf of decency everywhere and stuck it in a broom <laughs> closet. What, uh, what, what, what was the story? And do we have the painting? Uh, we're going to show the painting. Oh, okay. Is it a painting? It, it's not a painting. It's an art piece. So it's called oh, it's, uh, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say that again. Awesome. Nice. There we go. Um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so it... Um, it is basically it's uh, plastic uh, letters that spell the words bisexual, B U Y, sexual. You see how he um, did that? Mm. <laughs> so it'd be a play on words. Yeah, yeah. No, I got yeah. it. Okay. Right. I'm following so far. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> and so, and wallpapered behind <laughs> that, the backdrop is um, the price tags, red price tags that say 
Um, okay, and we so all know what 69, all know what 69 is. 69 is it? Now, what about 99, all, Kelsey? I think that's what we're all dying, <laughs> dying to know. Have you heard that? Is that 99? Heard that Are you familiar with that not, as a sexual no reference? No. You must no. be. You know no. everything. I, well, what are the possibilities? Let's talk what, about What them. are the possibilities? I, no, and the reason I ask is it, it seems like kind of a dumb piece of art to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not getting that it's a real that it's a real social Deep meaning, so maybe piece. I'm looking for more. Well, e e perhaps. I mean, that's what I've heard from a lot of people. It's like, what what does this even mean? I mean, what, how, the way it was best explained to me was this is a piece of social commentary. It is talking about um, the commodification of sex and... Um, the what of sex? Commodification. Commodification. All right. It's like an it's assemblage. Like sex, <laughs> sex sells, you know. Yes. An yeah. assemblage sex is sex, is right. sex is on TV. Sex is on the internet. Sex is on social media. That's you right. can't go anywhere, including the county building, apparently, without seeing it. Um, so there's an insight. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, and so basically, what happened was, is Bob Nelson. He is the chief of staff to Supervisor Peter Adam, um, Fourth District, up um, up in North County decided that it was it was uh, September 7th, I believe. He took down the painting. Um, he informed the Arts Commission he was going to do so. He um, put it in what I described as a broom closet. Apparently, it was actually the Arts Commission closet um, and kept it there. No brooms? Well, there might have been brooms in there. <laughs> still, still unsure about that point. But kept it in there, decided that it was inappropriate, and... Um, you know, that ruffled some feathers because that's not the process. You know, they, there's an arts commission. It's a, um, there are three members appointed by each district that sit on it. So he didn't really um, have the authority he didn't to really, put it I in mean, the right. and alleged so, broom closet. Right. And You're so, the vigilante art critic. Right. <laughs> so, um, so since then, actually, the county staff put the painting back up a couple of days oh. later um, because... I think that there was some rumors that perhaps they were worried that this is a $5,000 piece of art. Not sure if that's true. I looked it up online. That's uh, one figure I saw. Um, you know, if you if you take that down and put it in the closet and just, you know, destroy it in some way, then is the county liable? I is is the whole installation about sex? Um, so it's a skater. It's, it's an exhibit called Love and Guts. It's a group that's traveled all over the world, actually, and... Um, has are on display, and so the, it's a skater-inspired exhibit. So there's all, all these other pieces that like skateboard, like skateboard stuff. And and Bob, you know, told me that he thought that some of the other pieces were were kind of cool. I mean, I don't think that he's opposed to it as a whole. He just, you know, bisexual to him is just, you know, doesn't belong in a county building. Okay. <clears throat> I thought it was interesting in a story you just wrote that when they they put it up, he didn't put it up. Permanently, like he didn't affix right. it to the wall because he kind of knew it was going to cause some so, issues. It sounded like right. So what happened was, is there's a committee. Uh, it's called uh, County Art in Public Places Committee. What's the um, acronym? CAP. <laughs> <laughs> I saved. <laughs> yeah, I spared you from the acronym. Um, so they actually, you know, they approve all the exhibits that go up in the airport or in other county buildings. And when they looked at this exhibit, they saw a sample, and this piece wasn't part of the sample. Uh -huh. So when the person who coordinated it actually drove down to LA, picked up all the pieces, they were all wrapped, got up to Santa Maria, opened them. It, he saw bisexual, he's like, oh, this isn't what we approved, this could be a problem. He put it up on the wall but didn't secure it. Um, not sure exactly. But Kelsey, you're leaving out the key detail about that person. His last digit, his four, oh, right. the right. last four digits of his phone number, 6999. <gasps> No. Really? Oh, and that's why Joyce Dudley showed up, the district attorney. So then at the, the CAP meeting, yeah, uh, Joyce Dudley and um, one of her deputy district attorneys who heads the... Two of them showed up. Just one. Oh, but two, two people from... Two people from the DA's Including office. the district. Right. Yeah. Um, so her human trafficking task force that she started maybe two years ago now... Um, you know, the person who heads that spoke. Um, basically, their argument was, fine, if you want to have a piece that um, opens dialogue or starts dialogue um, about these interesting issues, though they didn't think that people just walking through the county building were going to actually be having this dialogue. It was one of those meetings where the word dialogue was used. Like, a lot of dialogue. Uh, did they use it as a verb to say we're dialoguing <laughs> oh, yeah. when they did? 
Well, thank goodness for City Desk where we have, <laughs> we're having a dialogue about this. So, so where is it? Is it hanging or not? Is so it now, like a, a little, so what they did, so what they decided today, the Arts Commission special meeting that they had to hold up in Solving, um, they are going to move it down the hall. So it's going to be in a, sort of a more obscure place. <laughs> it's not going to be front and center when you walk in, but it's still going to be part of the exhibit. Boy, there's a committee. <laughs> there is a committee. Well, it's really awful, but we'll hang it somewhere you can't see it. <laughs> I like that. That's good. All right. Speaking of uh, sex, um, a Justice Department study shows that one in five college women report having been raped or sexually assaulted, and there's been a lot of reaction to that, both in universities and, and legislatively, including passage of new affirmative consent laws. What is affirmative consent? So affirmative consent is um, a law that's been passed now in California and just now in New York saying that um, state universities have to have a policy that explains that people who engage in any kind of sexual relations have to first get affirmative consent from the partner at every step of the way along throughout the Define every encounter. step of the yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So there's a lot of things about it that are vague, um, but it's and, and a lot of and a lot of other states are considering adopting these policies. Again, it's in reaction to these sort of alarming statistics that, that have been going on um, in the last couple of years with all these reports that on various campuses, a huge number of you know mostly female students are uh, reporting being sexually assaulted, and then the way that it's being handled on these campuses is not ideal either. So, so you write about this in a column we can preview. Yes for uh, next week's uh, Santa Barbara Independent, yeah, plenty so of free parking. Next week. Okay, uh, and you say here, there's one giant stupid argument being made against it and being made a lot that affirmative consent policies will make sex unsexy. That's right, we're talking squelched mojo people. This is serious. I guess sexy is in the gonads of the beholder because most women I know will tell you there's no, you know, it'd probably be more effective if you read, <laughs> greater yes, you're doing great. turn off than a naked person putting something where you don't want it exactly when you don't want it there. Yes. So was that, is that in the legislative history that that was the problem? <laughs> no, that they're I, just, I mean, why do you think it's so a good idea? I think, I, I don't think it's an ideal idea. I think there's a problem going on. This is the way they're solving it. There's obviously some problems with it. It's it's hard to enforce. Some people say that it puts more of the burden on the accused. Mm -hmm. Now it used to be that more of the burden was of proof was on the victim. Um, it's not ideal either way, obviously. But to me, this whole thing is absurd. And what's absurd is not what we're asking people to do. What's absurd is that there are still people out there for whom this is not just a regular standard of what you do when you have sex with someone other than yourself, right? Like that there's people out there. <laughs> Is that, that covered? Is there a reference? <laughs> How do you feel? I feel pretty good. <laughs> it's, 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 it's when you like it logically, when you think about it, it's, it's disturbing that there are people who have to be told or reminded to check with their partner, make sure that someone's DTF before they actually begin doing it. That's, but that's they could exciting. also be perhaps drunk. I've, I've not, apparently college students, so this, such as the University of California Santa Barbara, to help indulge. That. This law is supposed to help prevent people who are like, "Oh, I thought that I thought it was cool because she couldn't talk because she was drunk." So now it's like, no, you have to get a yes, and it doesn't have to be verbal. It can be a head nod or some sort. Is of it all <laughs> laid out? I mean, it could, it, <laughs> no, it doesn't isn't. It tell you what it isn't, and that's where the vague part comes in. So how do you know if you're getting enough? That's a good question. Uh, affirmative consent. That's a good question. Do you think that, that this is a better or worse solution for this problem than hanging the picture down the hall is for that problem? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's along the same lines, but yeah. But I but I, 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 I think it's going in the right direction and I think it's well intentioned and like Star Sun said it's a, it's just a shame that we have to even say that, that that has to even be a thing. But I, I mean at least it's it's sort of uh, it's addressing the problem. I don't know if it's it's going to be concrete enough or understandable enough, but it's something. What's your view on this? Um, you know, my view initially was that it, it was bizarre and weird, and, and why is the government <laughs> going into right. like dorm rooms and, and mandating what goes on, and, and really what good would it do? But ultimately, I think uh, my opinion is what what's the harm? I mean, I think it's generating enough buzz, and I think enough people are talking about it and saying that 
um, you know, you need to have affirmative consent when you have sex with someone, and that seems fair to me. I mean, so you know, no, no harm in it, and and in the end, maybe it's, um, you know, maybe it'll move this conversation in the direction it needs to go. Nick, you're kind of an old person and <laughs> a, a wild child of the '60s. I mean, in your era, what do you think? How would this? play in. Do you, do you think it's a good idea? You know, I think it actually moves. It, I mean, it sounds really silly on the face of it. I, I mean, the only people where it really would help would be where everybody's so drunk they don't know what they're doing. Um, and Or you're taking advantage of somebody who's so drunk. And so are those the sort of people who are going to really pay attention to a bill mm -hmm. like this? But I think having sort of a social message saying, hey, dude, watch yourself, it moves it in the right direction. So I'm okay with that. I think it, you know, it'll probably help a little bit. Um, it's it's symbolic action, but sometimes that's better than nothing. And also, if those people don't pay attention to it, now there's recourse. The school can, you know, they they'll face disciplinary action. Do you think that this will generate a lot of objections? I'm uh, not objections, but a lot of people, you know, filing complaints and things. And yeah, I wonder. I don't know. I mean, that's sort of the problem. Um, but I did talk to a couple of college students who said that they were fine with it. I thought it was a good idea. Did you talk to men or women? I talked to women. I've heard that men have been maybe not equally as okay with it sure. or showing up as um, uh, you know, but, but they're less verbal, maybe less verbal, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, but okay with it. I you know I think. Do you like this? How about here? Do you want more? That's what you <laughs> write in this column, which is coming out in is the that, Independent. Where did you find You're that giving, language? You're all the good parts away. <laughs> <laughs> but it's TV, so it's here and it's gone. Don't worry about it. I mean, is that like a proof stuff, or you made that up? No, I was just making stuff up. I think it's also. I mean, one of the strongest arguments I heard is. You know, <laughs> I think it was Gloria Steinem who said, yes is the sexiest word in the English language. Right. So, you know, shut up if you're going to complain. <laughs> All right. Well, sadly, we're out of time. I, I think this was a, a very important discussion <coughs> to have, and, and uh, thank you all for it. And thank you all for watching uh, City Desk. And uh, you can reach us if you want to email uh, SPCityDesk at uh, gmail.com or on Twitter and Facebook as well. Uh, thanks again for watching. If there's a topic you would like us to cover, please let us know. Good night. Uh -huh.